Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 1315. I'm using a super uh, professional microphone. That's why I sound so good. I could have sounded like crap. I went back and listened to a podcast I did in 2012, Mike's Daily Podcast. And I just, the, my, I was using my mic at home, and Mike, Mike didn't. Mike's Daily Podcast. Mike didn't work. Mike didn't sound good. But this is Mike on a good mic, expensive mic. Mike's Daily Podcast. That I don't own. It is 1,315, 1315. And today we are going to cover some lies and truth. And lies and truth, that's life. And then we're going to dance around and I'll throw a knife at the wall. Because that's the kind of place cafe anyway is. It's rough. Mike's Daily Podcast. Madam Rita Vega Valentino, Bicep Bentley, stopping by. We got the segment called the FM Project. FM. Mike's. Standing for. Daily. Fascinating material. Podcast. Or fush you, Mang. Yeah. Hey, wait, that was uh, Astrolab. No, wait, Ast- that was uh, woo, Smash Mouth. That's right. Remember Smash Mouth? Hey, now. You know what? I I know who would appreciate that reference. Haley. But Haley doesn't listen to the podcast anymore. Why? Haley found some other podcast about my brother, my brother, and my dad, or whatever it's called. Oh, look who just walked in. I think it should be called the Pudgy Brothers Hour is what it is but it's hilarious i didn't mean to give them a plug because they obviously won't give me one even though they have a gazillion listeners look who's here hello my commercial it's madame Rudebega. i sense you are feeling a little bit down today oh i'm feeling a little i'm questioning my look who just walked in little dear mike it's valentino that back here intending and this is bison bentley do you know that Mike, did you get stabbed at that stop sign again you were talking about last show, D? Yeah, stopped. Do you know that? I did get stopped. Again, that stop sign. The last two shows, I would say to you, I, I would posit this to you, post this to you. I would throw this in front of your face and say, I think the last two shows were really good. This one's going to suck. But I want to tell you that that was what we talked about on the last show. Was the... And here's today's podcast picture. Podcast picture, which is of the stop sign that causes me no end of angst in Fremont. The one that I'm just about at work and it stops me. And Fremont is supposed to be the happiest place on earth. The best place to live in America. And it isn't because of all these stop signs and stop lights that make you wait and wait and wait. No, the podcast picture is actually of a place that gets a lot of bad press, Richmond. But there's this area called Point Richmond, which I have talked about before, which I used to like, and then I went there around Christmas time, and it was expensive, and I was walking my dog, and people were giving me stink eye that expression refers to people looking down on you, if you didn't know. I had an ex-girlfriend that used to say stink eye all the time. And it's probably because I think she used to get pink eye all the time. And we won't talk about why. But that's another thing. If you don't know what pink eye is, that's good. You probably never saw that South Park episode. Where the kids were getting pink eye and... Yeah, that was, uh, oh, I didn't have the thing on. The, and so I don't like Point Richmond much anymore. The downtown area is kind of cute and old, but I'm done with it. I've moved on. But there is this area near there. It's called Miller Knox Park. And when you walk up to the top of the hill, which isn't too far, it's not that long of a hill. Unlike Five Canyons, which I walked yesterday with my wonderful dog, Basil the Boxer. We walked up to the top of Five Canyons. I'll have to post pictures of that. That was a beautiful day. Even though it was really hazy yesterday, it looked like it was going to rain on the overnight. But it didn't, oddly. Maybe that's only oddly to me. But 
Yeah, this podcast picture is of Miller Knox Park, a beautiful spot that uh, you can see in the background, San Francisco, Yerba Buena Island. And the, uh, what's the other name for Yerba Buena Island? I was just trying to think of it. Military land. No, wait. Flat land full of radioactive waste, right? Treasure Island. That's it. The Treasure Island Flea Market. Have you ever gone to that? If you want to see hipsters, go to the Treasure Island Flea Market. You will see so many happy hipsters. It's happy hipster land. And hot hipster ladies as well, dressed in old, old clothes. And with a gazillion tattoos. That's what you'll see on the weekend. And I think you can get in free to the Treasure Island free market, free flea market. It's not free. You can get like free tickets usually through that SF Fun Cheap website. But I'm being very local with my talking to you today about the Bay Area. I did talk a little bit about BART and about the situation we have with it where it's a wonderful... When I used to come up and visit the Bay Area... Back when I listened, I lived lived in Southern California. Speaking of which, listening. I, I almost said the word listening there, and I think that's because my subconscious is pushing to say, Mike, talk about this. You know you want to talk about it, and I want to talk about it indeed, and I shall. And that is, I've listened to a lot of podcasts this morning. I did sort of the search Every once in a while as a podcaster, you feel a little self-conscious, which is what I'm feeling today, a little down. And so I said, I'm going to look at some of the other podcasts out there. And so I did, and I looked, and I saw that all the top podcasts have way better logos than I do. That's fine. I made the logo myself. I'm happy with it. And then I listened to some of the podcasts that are the number one top podcasts. And the first thing I, I noticed was, oh my gosh, they cuss a lot. They, cut, they use F words, S words constantly on these top podcasts. Okay, what else did I learn? I learned that if there's an interview, if there's an interview going on, there's no listening. Nobody's listening to the guest. These are horrible interviews. And interviews should be, you should be listening to the guest, and that's where the interview should take you, the chat, the discussion, the conversation. I'm a very giving conversationalist. When I talk to you one-on-one, you're going to be talking a lot, because I want to know what you have to say, because you are an interesting individual to me. Everyone is. I'm fascinated by humans, for I am an alien. And that explains everything, doesn't it? No, I'm from Earth. But the... Which I guess to an alien, I'd be an alien to an alien, wouldn't I? I guess we'd all be... That's neither here nor there, over there, up there, or anyway. Or cafe, anyway. Anyway, the thing is... Podcasters, the ones that I listened to that were the top ones, sounded horrible. It's as if nobody listened to the podcast. I'm listening now to this podcast... I will probably listen a little bit later to this podcast when I'm driving home after it's been posted. My point being, what the hell? How do these podcasts get so big? What are they? Now, a lot of them are on major, huge radio stations like WNYC has a lot of big podcasts, but that's the number one. That is the number one NPR station in the number one city in America. The biggest city is New York. You look at all the charts. It's always at the top. Then comes usually Los Angeles or Chicago. San Francisco's down around five or six. So I am podcasting to you from near San Francisco, where you can take BART to go to. I often take, actually, the only way I go to San Francisco is getting on BART. And I thought once upon a time, BART is this wonderful system. It's fantastic. It's, it's amazing. And it's here in San Francisco, and it's, it's counterintuitive because Californians love their cars and they love to drive, yet they're putting their cars away to ride on this amazing system that is now uh, several decades old, 40 years old, and built in the 70s. And in fact, if you watch George Lucas's THX, whatever, whatever, uh, that 
movie that he did before Star Wars, that science fiction with Robert Duvall. It is filmed in the BART tunnels just before BART was actually launched. And so it's an old system, but it's an amazing system, yet nobody treats it with any respect up here. You go to Portland, and their public transportation is beautiful. It's exquisite. You can eat off the seats. Here, you wouldn't. You don't want to sit on the seats. They're disgusting. The people are just, they're just, they're like they they put up with it. You know, they get on Bart, and they're like, I have to get on Bart, and everyone's in a bad mood. And the there's uh, somebody that will buy a ticket to get on Bart, and then ride Bart all day, and ask for money, and ride on Bart, and then defecate on Bart. It's not good. So. And then, like I say, they, they keep raising the rates on BART, and then they keep asking for more money at around election time. And I don't understand. I was such a fan of BART when I first moved here. BART! And that's I know what you were thinking. But I took that away from you. Go! But what do you think about BART? 336MM Daily. Tell me about what your favorite podcast is, 336MM Daily. And then tell me why that is your favorite podcast and why you think the most popular podcasts are the most popular ones. Do you like the most popular podcasts? Have you perused the top charts of Google Play? I, of course, look at Google Play because I have a Samsung and I'm a huge supporter of Google and Samsung and Androids and I hate iPhones. And the guy that I produce a talk show for in the morning, he loves Apple, loves iPhone, owns shares of Apple. And, I, and he went on the air yesterday, as a matter of fact, and said that, oh, the reason why I love Apple is because Google and, and Androids and, and uh, uh, Samsungs and whatnot, they, you have to jump through all these hoops to get what you want done. I just want to press a button and have it done. And my thinking was, well, that's because you're an idiot. And Apple treats you, it, it knows you're an idiot and coddles you and makes you and, and won't let you do if you, as soon as you get brains Apple's like no 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 you can, you got to do it our way no 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 that's why i love there's so many options so many different ways you can do one thing with google products android at all and i think that's the i like the freedom involved with that okay sometimes you might have to think a little bit but once you get around that problem, you've got you figured it out. I am all about user friendly. If your website isn't user friendly, I'm out. I know my website's got a lot of crap on it, and I basically structure it like a blog. But I just clicked on it, and it it opened pretty quickly. Of course, I got a bunch of cookies stored on this computer. But this is the computer at Cafe anyway. It, it's crap. And it still was able to open up my website. So check out my website, by the way, mikesdailypodcast.com. I've gotten all the way through the B's. Now i got to start on the C's for the interviews because I'm alphabetizing very slowly. That may not be the most user-friendly experience on my website, but still, you can listen to past interviews I've done with an amazing group of artists. Sometime this year, I will have everything alphabetized, but so far I've gotten up to B. And that's from over five years of interviews, so thank you for cutting me some slack. If you'd like to help out the show, there's the Amazon link. Click on that Amazon link, buy whatever it is you're going to buy, and that helps us out. And there's also the donate button for the PayPal, and there's all the past podcast pictures, all at mikesdailypodcast.com. And now the segment called The FM Project. The Fascinating Material Project. The FM Project. As if Kanye West's ego couldn't be any bigger. Now, now he's got this as well. I won. I won. Oh, wait, that's somebody else with an enormous ego. Oh. The, where? I know I've got it somewhere in here. That's so strange. Ah! Okay, Kanye West. 
Yeah, he's done some catchy tunes. His 2016 album, The Life of Pablo, was unique in more ways than one. In addition to massive singles like Ultralight Beam, and that's the one that goes like this. Ultralight Beam, you are so bright. And part two, that one goes like this. Part two, sequel, it's the second part. Right? That's how those go, don't they? That turned up and coming rappers, Chance the Rapper. Oh, I love him. I've got all his albums. And Designer, that's with two eyes. The second eye is because he's wonderful and I know it. It turned them into mainstream stars. And I listen to them constantly. And that's my radio station that I listen to. All the hits. Hits 105.3 plays them constantly they also play this great song called facetious that i love so much because it pertains to me the life of pablo was the first of west seven solo albums to be streaming only because that's what that's what he wanted and because that's what his manager said and his manager is this young hip guy that surfs every day in santa monica and Fills his body full of all kinds of chemicals. There were no physical CDs or vinyl records available, although some bootlegs popped up on Record Store Day last year. But in classic Kanye fashion, he has now turned this quirk into a landmark achievement. Last week, The Life of Pablo became the first streaming-only album to be certified platinum from the Recording Industry Association of America. Early last year, the RIAA updated its album and award methodology to reflect streaming's modern prevalence. Good for them. I could give a crap. Kanye West. Ugh. A day without listening to Kanye West is a fine day for me. I'm sorry, that's just how I, how I roll. And maybe that expression, that's how I roll, comes from Kanye West. I don't care. NASA is preparing to send its long-lived Cassini probe. And I would like to say one other thing while we're on the topic of rap and hip-hop. What the hell, Bruno Mars? So, Haley, okay, Haley made it in, onto the show today in, in mentioning twice now. So, even though Haley doesn't listen to the show anymore, but... Haley and I happened to watch two Bruno Mars videos yesterday. The popular ones. Uh, Uptown Funk and the whatever the new one's called with the all the like funkadelic y type synth- synthesizers. It sounds very 70s. It sounds very parla. parla uh, funka. Parla Funkadelic? I can't think of the George Clinton uh, uh, group. Um, now, all I'm saying is, is Bruno Mars now has to wear sunglasses every music video. What's this all about, Bruno? And I know you've got your awesome team that can do all the dancing that you do, but what, the last video, he's in Las Vegas. Every woman in the video had to be, like, in a bikini. I didn't like it. I got a bad feeling from it. I don't, I would never watch that video in front of any of my female friends. Because I think it would be, it'd be rude to them. Because it's it's making it it's it's getting into that hip hop culture life that I that I don't like, where it's all about, you know, money and all the women are in bikinis and then you got to put the gold teeth in and gold whatever. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get that culture and I don't like how it demeans women. Is all I'm saying. And I don't like Bruno Mars demeaning women. And in the past, he maybe he, he said, for this video, I will do it this one time. But I haven't seen any of Bruno Mars videos. Anyway, I hope this is not a trajectory Bruno Mars is taking. Because I find the demeaning women with the hip-hop culture. And there's so much greatness that comes from hip-hop culture. Hip-hop, in fact, comes from uh, the, the jazz world. It was a term used back then. Of course, in today's society where we have all kinds of... We can manipulate beats 
to any sort of way we like and play around with it. And then our ears go, ooh, that sounds cool. That sounds different. I can dance to that. I get it. But I just don't like the whole money, money, women in bikinis, and they got to look this way. And ugh. They got to be super. They got to have these crazy dimensions that are impossible for a normal person to attain. It's bad. Don't you agree? Okay, maybe not. Speaking of trajectories, NASA is preparing to send its long-lived Cassini probe into the unexplored region between Saturn and its rings for a scientific grand finale before the spacecraft's suicidal plunge into the planet. Yes, that's how it rolls in space, which technically things don't really roll in space. They float. I guess they're rolling along the gravitational pull. You know where we would be without gravity, by the way? John Mayer once had a song about gravity where he said, Gravity, stay the hell away from me. No, John, don't ever say that to gravity. Because without gravity, we'd be dead. We need gravity. We need it for, uh, you know, they throw astronauts up in space and they know that there's all kinds of bone decay when they're in space because they don't have real gravity. They don't have gravity at all up there. As far as I know, we haven't come up with a fake gravity yet. We can make the spaceship spin, and that gives them a little... No, there's no gravity, right? It's not like the... the It's Star Trek. They'd press a button, and all of a sudden, everything would have gravity again. What sci-fi show am I thinking of? I don't know. But since arriving at Saturn in July 2004, Cassini has been exploring the giant planet and its entourage hate that show, of 62 known moons, including enigmatic Titan, believed by scientists to resemble an early Earth, and the ocean-bearing moon, Enceladus, which is shooting ice particles out into space. To avoid any chance that hitchhiking Earth microbes still alive on Cassini could contaminate any potential living organisms on Enceladus, NASA plans to crash the spacecraft which is running out of fuel. This is going to happen on September 15th. It will crash into Saturn. And then a Dave Matthews song will play. Before its demise, Cassini has one last mission. April 22nd, Cassini will make a final pass by Titan and use the moon's gravity to slingshot itself into new or a new orbit that passes inside the 1,200-mile-wide gap between the edge of Saturn's atmosphere and its innermost rings, and NASA's hoping Cassini will survive long enough for 22 dives inside the rings, revealing details about their age and composition. But if a ring particle hits Cassini, it could bring the mission to an end because the spacecraft will be traveling at more than 70,000 miles per hour. At those speeds, even a tiny particle can do damage, as you can tell. Or... Uh, presume. Finally, speaking of smashing into things and blowing stuff up, I guess is what I'm saying. Mitch McConnell is going to about to blow up our. Uh, probably by the time you hear this, he'll have blown it up. The what do you call it again? The the well, the, I think they call it the nuclear option. They're saying toward the abyss of. Uh, where they can 60 vote requirement for the Supreme Court nominee. There we go. The uh, Okay. The uh, GOP leaders are going to eliminate a 60 vote requirement for Supreme Court nominees and allow confirmation of Gorsuch to the Supreme Court with a simple majority vote. And the 60-vote barrier would eliminate the minorities party, which could be Republican again in the future, their historic influence over who the president nominates to the high court and significantly decreases the ability to help exercise a check on the executive branch. Which to me does not sound like what America is all about. But then it was Harry Reid who changed the whole filibuster thing. And that was just a couple years back. So we'll see what happens. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. 
The Democrats are going to be filibustering. And that's the end of the show. I'm a little bit lost, as you can tell. I'm walking around outside a cafe anyway, a little bit lost, a little bit dazed and confused. But remember to listen. And remember to listen to the the, the sound of the birds chirping. And all shall be well. And I'm going to now walk off into the sunset as this jet flies by and the end of the show happens. Next show, it'll be Shelley Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, and John Deere the Engineer. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.